exercise one. We begin by going to File New, which is up here. This is this little white sheet. You could click on this button and select New. Next, you want to select Part, Assembly, or Drawing. In this case, we're building a part file. So we select the part, hit OK. The next thing we do, once we see that our part file is up, we first want to make sure that all the settings are correct in it. This is where we go to the Tools Options menu, right up here at the top. This will bring up a window containing information relevant to SOLIDWORKS. At the top we have our System Options or the Document Properties tab. In this case, we just want to make sure under Document Properties that it's set up for the ANSI Dimensioning Standard and the units should be set up for IPS or inch, pound, second. You can also set up decimal places, how many decimal places you might like to see. In this case we might want to see up to three decimal places. And then hit OK at the bottom. To begin we need to select one of our planes. In this case we'll select the front plane in the feature tree and when we select it we get a little option just above it. It's a little pencil. We could go ahead and select that that's to start a sketch or there's one right up here. Either one is fine. Go ahead and select sketch. Now we can see our origin in the center and that's where we want to start sketching from. Once we determine what type of geometry we wish to sketch, in this case it's a rectangle, we just select the rectangle, corner rectangle. You can see that there's several options for parallelograms and rectangles. In this case we'll just go with the standard setting. Find the origin. You'll see to the lower right of the pointer there is a yellow symbol indicating that we're coincident to the origin. And that's good. That's adding a relationship automatically of coincident. So we'll just hold down the left mouse button at that point and drag it out. And we get feedback right above the pointer, X and Y. Uh, in this case, we just want to make it anything that's close to, uh, it's going to be 5 by 3. So Let's just make sure that uh, it's around that vicinity. It doesn't have to be perfect though. Once you finish sketching that, now we need to add dimensions to it to constrain it. Over at the top left, we'll see Smart Dimension. Select it. To add a dimension, you could either click on two points or you could click on the entire line. In this case, we want to select the entire line, drag it to the left, and click to drop it. Type in the new value. In this case, it's supposed to be five inches high and hit enter or the green check mark. Now click on the bottom line, drag it down, click again to drop the dimension, and then we need to wait for the modify box to open up and type in 3, hit enter or the green check mark. Now if you wish to fit this to the screen, there is a fast key or there is an icon. The icon is right up here, zoom to fit. You'll notice in parentheses there on the little balloon it has F. So if you type the letter F, that's a fast key for zoom to fit. The escape key on your keyboard in the upper left will disengage any tool generally. So we want to release our rectangle tool. So by hitting escape that brings us out of that and into the selection mode. Now we could go ahead and we need to extrude this or add the three dim third dimension to it. Right now we're in the sketch tools over here. We can tell that by this tab. On the left though there is a features tab. Click on that with the left mouse button and we find extrude boss base. Select that. It automatically kicks us into an isometric view. This will only occur for the very first time here and let's type in 0.5. As you notice that's automatically typing in the information in this dialog box over the left which indicates the depth. Now there are other options we'll go into later but for right now keep it at blind for the distance and hit the green check mark. If it asks you to save it you can and it's probably not a bad time. Let's go ahead and click on that save document option. This is just a safety measure in case something crashes. Uh, in this case, call this E, capital E, 1, for exercise 1. Uh, for next week, we'll do exercise 2, is E2, E3, E4, and so on.
hit save. Now we could go ahead and select this face because we want to start a sketch and we're going to draw a block on the bottom of it. So we select the face. Again we could use this option right here to start our sketch or we could go up to the top left and click on the sketch tab and find the sketch tool. Either one, whichever one is easier for you. Now we select the rectangle tool once again, glide up to the origin at the lower left corner of the block, click and drag across now be careful not to go too high in this one because you will find this point right here. You don't want to drag to that. That's the midpoint. But just uh, remember that because the lab that goes with this exercise, that could be very useful. All right, once you have the rectangle drawn out, you can release it. Go to Smart Dimension again up at the top left. Click on the vertical black line on the left. Drag out the dimension and click again to drop it and make that 1.5. The next step is to click on the bottom line. Do we necessarily need this though? What happened actually is we have might have a conflict if we drop this in. Let's go ahead and try it. And sure enough, there's a conflict. We can see in yellow that this automatically has a relationship established that's locking it into the edge of the block that's behind it. So by adding a dimension, we're duplicating our efforts, and therefore it's invalid. So in this case, we want to make sure that we leave it at the proper, just keep the dimension as driven and hit OK. And what that will make sure is that this is just a an entry that is um, is just for reference. We could click on it and delete it if we actually want to. We could just go ahead and go to Features now up at the top left and go to Extrude Boss. And again, set that 0.5 at a blind distance, hit the green check mark. Or Enter on the keyboard. We'll, hitting it two times will do the same thing. All right, if you glide over your part and hold down the left mouse, uh, the actual middle mouse button or the scroll, if you actually push it down, don't scroll it, drag it, you'll discover that you could rotate the part dynamically in space. Scrolling it will zoom in and out. Okay. Now select this face. Find the sketch tools and click on the sketch tool. So make sure you click on this little tab first or else you won't see these tools and then click on Edit Sketch. Ex uh, click on the Sketch tool. Now we could go ahead and we're going to draw a little hole in here. So by selecting the face, we find the Circle tool over here. Click on Circle and locate somewhere around this vicinity here in the upper left hand corner. Click and drag. Go to Smart Dimension and add your dimension of 0.75. Then click on the circle and dimension it to the top edge of 1 inch. Then click on the circle again and dimension it to the left edge, vertical edge. Drag it up and make that one inch. So it's offset one inch from the center of the circle to both edges on the top and the left side. Now we go to Features and we find Extrude Cut. Click on Extrude Cut. And in this case, if we want to make sure design intent is followed, perhaps it's a good idea, instead of just giving it a specific depth of 0.5, to ask it to go through all by clicking on this little arrow over here on the left. And we'll see the through all option. Uh, if you left it at 0.5 and someone later on wants to modify this and they actually extend this out maybe to an inch, your hole will only go half that distance. So through all will ensure that it always stays through all. So hit the green check mark to apply it. If you click on the middle button and rotate, you'll see that the part is complete. Go ahead and hit the save, and that ends exercise one.